Welcome to the episode five of the Three Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, we will be talking about how to build a brand. But first, I want to remind everybody, do not forget to pay the fee. If you got any value from this podcast, if it made you laugh, if you found it funny, if you learned something, please like and share the show and comment. Mm. Um, pay it forward. The universe will pay you back if you help others up. Topic for another day, though. How to build a brand. Who has imposter syndrome right now talking about this? It's an interesting one. Should we crack open our wine first and talk over the wine? Yeah. All right, Do alcoholic. Our <laughs> Go on then. Pause. Oh, so it's we, your turn. Well, yeah, it's my turn. We did get a... Um, it won't be as hard this time. We've got we a, sc a screw lid, is what she said. Because I struggled last time. Is that it? Yeah, Benji struggled as well. So what have we got here today? A it's Code de Rome. Oh, yeah, it is. I like the Rome region. It's a nice one. Beautiful. This is a club card special. <laughs> <laughs> Of course it is. Two for one. <laughs> Two for one on Wednesday. Schnorra. It's Friday. <laughs> what does Schnorra mean? Tell the people. Uh, tight arms. Tight arms. arms? No, sorry, short arms, so you can't reach your pockets. Okay. Is actually? Is that the like direct no, like, uh, translation? A... Yeah, I didn't want Thank much you. anyway. It's okay. Yeah, we need to get wine glasses. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Happy Friday. To the three entrepreneurs. To the three entrepreneurs. To the three entrepreneurs. 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 To the two entrepreneurs yeah, and the, the boss. <laughs> That's nice. That's quite nice. I like Cote de Rome. That's yeah. right. I really like Cote de Rome regions. Very nice. It's not where Chateau Neuf de Pat comes from. from. Mm. That's very nice, that one. Okay. <laughs> so the reason why I was asking who has imposter syndrome right now mm. is because it is quite bold to be teaching people I know. When we're talking about what to discuss today, mm. I, I, I could see you guys were reluctant or weary of um, professing to have brands yourself. So let's just dial it back. I want to break this down you know, really into small segments first. Then, you know, we'll talk about brick, 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 and then it will look we'll like a house. a house. Yeah. Well done. And then I'll sell it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so go. firstly, yeah. what is a brand? It's a very good... To the floor. Very, first very good question. What is a brand? It's a very wide definition. I mean, I would say a brand <clears throat> is your your identity. Someone that when they see something or hear something, they correlate with a person or a product so for example when you see apple mm. you know mm. um you just know what comes with it the tech mm. you know, mm -hmm. i actually think apple when you lift the box up in your iphone there's a scent in there that it evokes is there yeah they, is pay, really? they pay millions that's insane millions like greg's have a scent don't they apparently they yeah, was a bakery greg's. so it will smell of something yeah <laughs> no apparently greg's <laughs> actually... <of> sausage rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but they pump the smell of sausage roll out of the front, apparently. Oh, what? So people... To make it smell like bakery. Interesting. Oh, in the street. And then they're like, oh, I fancy a sausage roll, actually. Yeah. Now. And Penaligans. Do you know Penaligans? Yes. Yeah. The, the perfume. Yes. Mm -hmm. The perfumery. Mm -hmm. They also do the same, but that's obvious. You can actually see it being sprayed out of the it's a good, tube. good, great idea, wow. though. So, I mean... Yeah, good point. Idea. Difficult question, but I would say a, a brand is, you know, the identity of what that product or service is. <clears throat> Yes, it's how you how you you know align the two. So for us, you know, my brand might be, mm. I don't know, you know, and you know, going back to your question, do we feel imposters here? You know, yeah. I think between the three of us, you know, we're all still trying to build mm. our social handles, you know, on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn. So you know, giving the advice to the people, you know, we're still learning ourselves, mm. but I think that's why this podcast is so great because it's so raw. Yeah, and we're on the journey ourselves as well as the watchers and listeners yeah yeah that's true <clears throat> yeah i definitely yeah. agree what do you think is a brand i mean yeah i think you, i think you've kind of summed it up really a brand is defines your company or your 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 business doesn't it um i think we're all trying to build a well-known brand in ourselves so where we are the brand yeah so for example when you referenced apple or coca-cola these are products whereas our brand is our ourselves our per mm. this is it's a personal brand mm. which is probably slightly different because again when you look think about like ronaldo cristiano ronaldo yep kim kardashian they are their own brand i was just about to ask you do you think everyone is a brand yeah definitely everybody definitely we are our own brand definitely every, we are every yeah. you know everywhere i go everything i wear everything i say i'm yeah. marketing myself would you say so some if say i'm somebody who works at I don't know. Uh, let's say I'm... Oh, God, I'm trying to think of a really good example now. I mean, sports people definitely are their own brands. 
that would be a bad example because it's obvious now. But, but if we spoke, sorry, if we spoke in like Arsenal days yeah. when there was the Invincibles, yeah, <clears throat> I think it was only when like Thierry Henry came on board when he started actually having he. I think he kicked off like the individual having a brand within a brand. Yeah, because mm. there's pre that it was Arsenal. You know, you never think oh it's Ray Parlour or Tony Adams. It's yeah. Arsenal. Yeah, mm. then Thierry Henry. Thierry, Thierry Henry came on board yeah. and, you know, he outran everybody yeah. and scored God knows how many goals, yeah. broke mm. so many records. And well, they, you're right. They were brands within brands because, like you said, yeah. Arsenal was the brand. Then That's Cristiano the football Ronaldo, club. And then you had the, the players. It actually went further down the net. Like, Thierry Henry would then be sponsored by Nike to wear Nike boots. Yeah. Mm. So actually it was Michael a brand Jordan. within a brand and he was marketing a brand via yeah. his brand, his yep. personal brand. They're leveraging off his brand as yeah. well. 100%. Well, you look at, you, look at, um, you know, uh, Mbappe, for example. He, mm. um, you know, the, the French striker at PSG. The, the French government, so Macron, got involved when Mbappe was deciding whether he was going to move to Real Madrid or stay at PSG mm. because he has such a pull factor to bring people to France, mm. to bring people to Paris because they want to go to the stadium to watch him play. Yeah. And therefore it's good for the economy. Yeah. So, but, you know, building a brand within a brand and it's you know, really something that we'll come on to. Can someone within a brand be too big? Yeah. You know, you've seen, you've seen historically, if we're using the football analogy, David Beckham, yeah. you know, he mm. got too big for United. Yeah. You know, Sir Alex Ferguson has historically been known when you get too big for the club, you're out. Yeah. Too big for your boots. Too big well, for your it, boots. It, it happened recently. I mean, Cristiano Ronaldo and Manchester United. Exactly. When, when Cristiano Ronaldo re-signed, they sold Wasted. more shirt sales than they had for any other player. Yeah. All the players combined that season. And so where I think we are fortunate, you know, adding on to that point, where we've previously been at corporate companies mm. and i think we touched on it in one of the other podcasts where the brand is here and the agent sits behind the brand mm. you know at ddre global the principles have flipped that completely around yeah so they want us to become too big for our boots because if we're doing well and we're successful and we've built an amazing brand yeah that's what they're giving us the platform to do so definitely so we're fortunate yeah uh, i was someone <clears throat> mentioned um that yeah you know you might become too big for the brand so would you say that maybe there is a drawback to having your own brand within a brand well i mean i guess there's that argument that you know especially for us in the brokerage if you become so good why do you need to be at djre global there is that you know that you become so big that why yeah. do you I, I mean using a football analogy is different because you're not going to go and leave and set up <coughs> well, your lewis team. hamilton yeah, well, yeah, what yeah. can we use like other than sports because i think that's just too easy tennis players like you know they mm. are their own brands naturally mm. who like, how who can we think of because i don't want to keep it like a state agency a state agency um, someone who broke free from their brand and set up an, a new brand effectively that's what you're that's, that's what we're not, trying to find that's not in sports could it be real estate <clears> or no i know what you mean just I, me i know what you mean i know I, I understand what you mean but i think like benji said what we are trying to do is promoting ourselves so now we're not pr just pushing out DDRE. Well, if DDRE, it's us. Mm. You know, we are trying yeah. to build our personal brand where people can see us every single day. They can see how we give value back to everybody. They can see the types of properties that we market, who we are as individuals. And then suddenly someone starts to follow you and they see that every single day. Mm. Suddenly a year later, when they want to buy something or sell a property, want advice, they're like, I've seen Oliver every single day online. You know, I almost feel like I know him. Yeah. Mm. And everyone's brand will be different because it's all about the individual, yeah. individual, which is good. Mm. Mm. That's fine. Definitely. There's going to be yeah. someone that might want to use Jess Bishop over Alex Vigora as their agent. Yeah. They'll DM her and not DM me saying, I want you to sell my property. Mm. Definitely. What have you found mm. the hardest nuances, the hardest points of building your own brand so far? <sighs> What's been any it, moments where you It you've depends gone, what you, you're talking about because I think. <clears throat> If you go back to the first question, which is what actually is a brand or what constitutes building a brand, um, then you really get into defining, you know, how hard is it really? Like, for instance, how do you measure that? It, building a brand could be posting stories on Instagram and documenting your days every day, all day, you know, telling people what you're up to and what you're doing. Is that hard? Hmm. Some people might find it harder than others because they might be embarrassed to speak to the camera or put up selfies because they're self-conscious or they think that they're going to ruffle some feathers internally because it's not their uh, ethos or culture. 
um you know i was with a guy yesterday i was gonna get to this later but i was with somebody yesterday so i mean a whatsapp group with uh, as you guys know with a lot of central london letting agents and we do uh drinks twice a year and last night hence why i'm a bit tired today uh, we had uh, one of those drinks q1 drinks and someone uh you know i was catching up with somebody there who works in a, a big medium to big corporate company and he said we're too ahead of the curve and he doesn't want to post on social media now because he feels like he's not ready it might ruffle feathers internally and he'd rather wait until he's more established to start posting on social media <clears> and <throat> building his brand which is really interesting because we had this talk you know yeah. booked in for today this mm. podcast mm. what do you guys think of I that i think he's completely wrong i think we both we all know well firstly we all, i can nip the first one in the bud we're yeah. not too early or ahead of the curve no. because what we're doing is working if we're anything we're it. starting like quite late now like this is this yeah people are already doing it people are Other doing people it outside and, of and it's happening well quickly thinking they've, yeah. got, they've clocked onto it and it takes time it's not like suddenly no, you why do why would you not why, you, why? but it, it it's blows not my like mind you, like, it doesn't happen not? overnight it's you not like this, suddenly you make yeah. up a couple of posts and you're you know you're a, no. you're an influencer and you've built trust of those people i've been posting now for like time god knows how much six years or so on instagram so going back to the question is it hard to you know build a brand it's bloody hard. It is incredibly hard. Like it's yeah. so hard. And you know, you were you were touching on, you know, doing the didn't story. Touch <laughs> you touched on, you know, oh, doing yes. the stories, guess, doing the yes. posts. Say, so I think you were insinuating perhaps that that wasn't hard. It, it's a it's a proper commitment. Yeah. You know, doing stories. Yeah. Even I've it been is. I've been trying to build my and when I say brands, kind of like build my social following. You know, for I've but been doing it properly for five or six years. Is that just what it's about though? Social media. Well, I mean, look, if you've got a following on your social handles, you know, realistically, we're not going to have a logo or, well, I say realistically, the chance are we're not going to have a logo or an, you know, an, when I think of brands, I mean like Apple, Coca-Cola, um, Spotify, you know, we're not going to have something like that. I think our brand is is the message that we put out on our social handles and it's bloody hard to to build that and grow that. I've been building it for five, six years, posting, you know, religiously at some point, you know, dropping the ball and not posting as much. You know, I've got 6,000 followers on Instagram, mm -hmm. five or six on LinkedIn. You know, I'm desperate for that to just keep on growing and growing. And I'm posting more than most people. And it, it's, it's hard. Screams desperation. <laughs> oh, sorry. No. I was going to say something else. <laughs> and uh, and it's, it's hard. So, you know, if you're not going to post yeah. religiously and you're not going to put your face on camera and you're not going to do your stories, you haven't really got a chance. Mm. I just thought of something, which is like how to define your brand. This is a bit dark. This is a bit, Go okay. On. I'm going to say it anyway. Imagine you die. Mm -hmm. Just imagine for a second you die. Uh, this is really dark. <clears throat> it's your funeral. You're no I longer know. here. And um, someone, it might be, I don't know, your wife or your friend does your eulogy. Mm, what, what are they, are they going to say? Why are you copying me? I love it. <laughs> What are they going to say about you? That's your brand. Well, what do you want them to say about you? Start building your brand now. Be well, well, the change you want to see. Be, be your eulogy. Be whatever you want your eulogy to, mm. to say. Yeah, but I mean... Efficiency. It doesn't have to be social media. It can be every interaction you have with a client, with uh, someone in the club so you've never met before. Sure, but we're... I guess oh, I knew that guy. I can't believe he died. I we're, think X, Y, Z about him. I think that it's, it's different. I get the question. I think it's slightly different we're talking about how to build a brand i assume from a working point of view you know when you're well, it, from what other point of view well your eulogy they're not going to talk about your no, brand they will from your from your work they'll talk about he no, was a but great that, that's person that's it that's that's just he had, it he had his kids that's it his... that's that's my point exactly it's not just about work though is it brand because you're a semi-pro football player as well mm. and you post about football on your instagram sometimes not too. a very good one though <laughs> but yes are. um you know, that's who you are. So what, what would you want them your to say? Your brand is who I you mean, are. It's your, your, your individuality. And that's what people should exude, exude mm, through. Mm, your, your well, I'm going to say social media again because it's just the easiest thing at the yeah. moment to use as a tool. So you're saying you have to, to show, be yourself. Let me finish. To show the people, you know, who they are. Yeah. Mm. I do agree with that because I think ultimately when, when we go meet our clients, we build rapport. Okay, and all we're doing every yeah. day on our social media, we're building rapport with people. Yes, Sorry, we're showing some... You're building rapport with people you don't even know you're building rapport exactly, with. Exactly, yeah. But what people build rapport with, not just because I talk to people about and giving back some value about real estate, 
It's because they then enjoy maybe me on that Sunday playing my little boy and they're yeah. like, oh, you know, that's cute and I'm yeah. going to do that and X, Y, and Z or Oliver likes Ipswich Town Football Club and he likes going to X, Y, and Z and eating mm. out here and there. So do I. That's, that's great. And that's, I'm building rapport with someone yeah. mm. without even sitting down opposite them. And that's the power in this is that people will buy into people. So what I'm trying to build in my brand is um, show me as a, as a whole character. Yes, I want them to know of my success stories within business and how good I am at my job and how much value I can add to you, of course. But I want them to have fun watching me. Mm. I want them to be like, he's such a good guy. I really like him. Because ultimately then when it comes to them wanting to do something, I know that they will pick up the phone to me or they'll DM me mm. and they'll reach out and say, can you come and give me some advice? So I, I do believe a brand is not just from, I agree with you, Alex. I don't think it's just from a business perspective. Yeah. It's a who am I? Wholesome. Yeah. Who am I? And and it layered back, you know, me and my joggers on a Saturday. Yep. You know, me having a bad day. Me, you know, upset. But people don't want to post that. People don't. Why not? Why not though? Yeah. As in, as in don't yeah. get me wrong. I'm, I I post it, you know, yeah. when I have a deal full through or yeah. if, you know, it's not all rosy. Things go wrong. You know, we discussed it in our first podcast where, yeah. you know, we went, we've gone through various different things in our lives. Mm -hmm. Um people don't want to post negative stuff because unfortunately social media is usually just the the hand selected things that you actually want to post yeah and I, and I agree i think that's where you know you actually get to know the person that you're working with yeah. when you see the bad the good and the ugly yeah and i think i 100 percent implore people to show when the you bad had the, the yeah. good and the ugly do you mean the good, good the bad, the bad and the ugly <laughs> and i implore people to post when you've had a yes. bad day when something negative happens you don't want to make be a negative nancy and no, of course the whole time yeah but no offense, Nancy. No offense, Nancy. <laughs> it's good to show yeah. emotion and show, things yeah. going wrong because things go wrong. One hundred percent. It's normal. It's human. Yeah, that's it. It's human. I think that's the but, word. But the other like, thing is human like, and personalized. Human personalized. It's normal and it's human. Yeah. Mm. But don't forget with, yeah. with with social media and everything like that. That's we are not. This isn't paid marketing. We are building a brand for free mm. on social media. Yeah. A place where everybody <clears> in the world. I sit there on the train every single day and I look at everyone around me and what they're doing on their phones. 90% are always on social media, something social media, yep. LinkedIn, mm. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, That's wherever it. they are on there and social media. So now I can get to all of these people sitting on the train by my social media. I'm almost talking to every single yep. one rather than going around like speed dating on a train. Mm. I'm getting to every single person. And now if I'm building up my brand to a time where someone wants to transact, I know they will call me. And with the way that we know like AI is, you know, technology is going mm. where, you know, you can put a bit of information into, a, uh, into an AI and a bot will send you all that information out. Yeah. These people who don't have brands in five years time. There's nothing. There's nothing. Because we now have the technology to get data and ping it out to someone quicker than anybody else. So the only value that we then offer is us as a brand. So if we had a fourth chair here and Alex's friend who was speaking to last night yeah. said... I'm not going to post because you might be too far ahead of the curve. What would you say to him? I would say you're wrong, mate. You've got to start now. Start yesterday. Yeah. Because it's going to take time and it's going to be uncomfortable. And you ha it's going to take years and years of grind. Like you said, Benji, five years putting in hard graft. You know, it's posting. It's getting vulnerable with yourself. Mm. Um, because ultimately now, this AI guy who in this 100 meter race and we're near the finish line, it's like you saying bolts up my ass now. He's fucking chasing mm. me. Yeah. He's fucking close. So I need to run quicker now than anybody else. Mm. And the only way I'm going to do that and beat everybody else in five years time and beat this bot is have a personal relationship with everybody. Yep. Mm. Because they still want personal relationships. I want to just dial it back for the people before I go into my next question for, mm. for the listeners. Um, so if we just think previously before the, before, you know, having this tool of social media, the, the main thing about marketing yourself or a company is to be in front of people uh, and get in people's faces. So previously, you know, you would advertise a business in newspapers or on billboards or mm -hmm. maybe TV adverts, mm -hmm. uh, very costly things or on the tube, you yep. know, on the tube where the map is. Yeah. Now we have the ability to market, sorry, anything we want to for free mm -hmm. with social media, like you mm -hmm. just said. And the amazing thing about it is that you just said yourself, where are people spending most of their time? On their phones. When they're on their phones, what app are they using the most? 
social media, whether it be Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is, yeah. Snapchat, YouTube. And we are making sure we're in those people's faces uh, all the time. So when they think property, they think Oliver Ingalls or Benji Weinberger. Mm -hmm. So if the person that I spoke to last night isn't doing that, they're going to just get outplayed because they're going to think of someone else instead of him. Yeah, they won't be there. Yeah. Yeah. Because if he ever leaves his that's company, yeah. his brand... That's just the crux goes, of it, isn't it? Yeah. That's the thinking, the mentality well, behind it's, it's, it. It's, that's it. You know, where, where is your it. social profile? It's your social yeah. profile is your, is your digital CV. Yeah. You're just going to get left behind by the people who are doing it. Mm. And they might not even be also, good. They might not even be good. One other thing I was saying was that he was saying in the area he operates, it's very old money. And pe the, the buyers and the sellers or his target market is older money. And they might not be on social media or on that sort of exposure. Okay, fine. Again, I'm going to get a bit dark. Give it 10 years. They're all going to be dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Second time, I know. Well, but just, it's true. Hang on. One. And then, wait. The people in 10 years that will be buying from you, and this doesn't just go for a stage industry, it goes for anything, are going to be, people that are going to be the kids on TikTok today. I, I agree. There is also, you know, there are also things in real estate that aren't broken. Yeah. You know, receiving a letter in the post, you know, even now, although we do everything digitally, when we sell something, when we're bringing a new property to the market or discreet, and we want to let the neighbors know, we'll, we'll send them a letter. You know, the neighbors yeah. saying, just so you know, we've just sold this property or we are bringing this to the market. You know, I, if they are old money and they aren't on social media, I don't, I don't think there's any harm in sending the old fashioned way of doing agency and sending letters through or door knocking. You know, the, the, yeah. I think there is a hybrid. I think there are elements which we can all agree are broken very broken with yeah. how things previously operated but there are also things that we can utilize to our advantage yeah and it blows yeah. my mind how they wouldn't yeah. utilize the things that have available but I, I, kind of, I don't know mm. I, do, I do disagree though a little bit with that Ben, because with let's say we've got a, a, a you know you send out a thousand leaflets and it's like valuation requests or something like that mm. you get two through we don't we have two bits of data we don't really know who's picked it up. We don't know who's looked at it. We don't know who's chucked it in the bin straight away. And ultimately, with social media, you can put the same amount of money on a sponsored post, for example. Mm. And then you get at the back end of it, a graph of how many people have opened it, who's looked at it, yep. who's clicked onto the link. And that is valuable data exactly. that we can then so say, I'm gonna this I'm going well. gonna, gonna to disagree with you disagreeing with me. Let's go, mate. Because we have, we have picked a third-party company if you listen to our morning meetings, you would know this, <laughs> that when we send out a letter to someone, yeah. fine, we obviously can't quantify if people throw it in the bin, yeah. but we can actually track if they click on, um, you know, the web link, for example, yeah. they QR can scan the QR code, they yeah. can scan it. We can see where, you know, who's, because each uh, letter that goes out has their own individual yeah. QR code. So for example, 10 Downing Street yeah. has its own QR code. He said if, 10 if, this time. If, um, who's the, uh, Rishi Sunak, is Rishi Sunak? Oh my yeah. God. If Rishi Sunak, <laughs> yeah. um, scans the QR codes, yeah. we will get a notification that 10 Downing Street scan the QR codes. Yeah. So again, it's incorporating yeah, the yeah. technology that we have Into nowadays. Yeah. So I don't think it's completely broken. I get what yeah. you're saying. You know, if you have a web link, if you, you know, you have the online data, fine, yeah. but we can incorporate that with the letter drop. Yeah. So yeah. checkmate. Check <laughs> Here's a question. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Do you think that you can build a brand and be a very successful brand now without social media? Ooh. Starting fresh. Okay, we'll look at Apple. No, 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 no. But let's say, no, you're starting tomorrow and it's just you. So there's no like, you've not got the influencer. You're not the footballer. You're not the athlete. You're not the musician. You are going to go out tomorrow. You're going to start a brand. You will in, have oh, a starting brand. Tomorrow. You're starting a tech brand tomorrow, for example. I got okay. this. You will have a brand because everyone is a brand. But that brand might not be as strong if it didn't use the tools it had available to it. Yeah, but it will never peak. Surely it will never peak. It's never going to peak. Have you seen the Jungle Book? Socials. Yes. Okay. So uh, not the cartoon. I think it was the film I watched. And Mowgli wants to use tools yeah. to you know help him get places. And Bagheera, yeah, or whatever the name is, yeah, doesn't like him doing that. And says we don't want you to use human tools. This is like the guy yesterday. You know, he was saying, you're too ahead of the curve. I'm not ready for social media yet. But, like, if you have the tools available to you, why would you not use them? Yeah. Which can propel you forward yeah, into the yeah. future. 100%. And make you more money, I which agree. is what you're going to work for in the first place. Let's yeah. be honest. Yeah. Why else are you getting out of bed really early yeah. in the morning? If you're not getting paid to do that, I bet you any money you wouldn't put 
get out of bed really early, put your clothes on, brush your teeth, do your hair, and go into an office every single day. Yeah. For the rest of your life. But do you know what you're I'd doing say for to money. Him, I'd so say, if you're gonna make more money, would why would you not do that? Him now and say you're too comfortable. You're yeah. happy sitting behind your brand yeah. at this moment. It's safe. And they're feeding you secure. with instructions. They get a pension. Get yeah. But mate, yeah. within three or four or five years, like we've just said, when AI takes over and they've yeah. got bots sending out information, Lex, Y, and Z, and AI comes in, mm. you're only going to win. You know, the people who are going to win are the people that can distribute that data quick enough yeah. and then add the personal value back. He's going to lose. Well, if he's got a hand call, he's going to lose. 5,000 people. And do you know what he said to me? We're going off gonna tan- on a tangent here, but do you know what he said to me? He then said to me, um, yeah, but our company uh, can pay for administrators and, and assistants and paperwork people. So I can just do deal, 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 do a deal, fill out a form, and then I can do the next deal and the next deal. I'm like, but okay, no so you do a deal with one person. Okay, so they're renting something because he's in rentals for £10,000 per week. Right. That's a lot of money. That's £43,333 a month and 33 pence. And what do you do with that person? He, he was like, I don't know. I was like, okay, what if they want to buy something? He goes, I have to pass them to sales. Well, mm. there you go. That's where it We're relationship broken. focused it's agents. Broken. So we would keep in touch with that person, take yeah. them for lunch, send Fine them flowers, yeah. them an orchid if they move in. And also, let's say he's doing deal, 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 deal. If he's not That's talking it. about his successes, no one knows he's doing deal, yes, deal, deal, deal. Correct. Yeah. You, we could do three deals in a month. He could do 10. Mm. But if we're posting about every deal we do, everyone knows about the three deals Which we do. Which isn't to show off. It's, it's to, show to show the off. marketplace and prospective clients sure, what we're up to. But we're to. busy. Mm. Yeah. And that we've, we're running one with applicants. We've got properties on our books that we can, se- we can sell or rent. But if he's not on social channels and he's yeah. not showcasing no. his successes... Yeah. Well, he might be, but he'd be, he'd be posting... About how he one went clubbing last success, night. Yeah. But his client, this is what his client's going to do. He might do one deal now, okay? Yeah. And then suddenly though, over the next six to 12 months, one that guy or that lady is going to find one of us on social media. Yeah. And then they're going to follow us and they're going to see us every single day. And, and then we're going to build that rapport and that trust with that lady. And so when she decides to do something, rent, sell again, find another place, whatever it may be, she's going to call us. So... Tim or Tom or whatever his name is has lost that client now. And then we are so good at relationships. We're going to do the deal with her. We're going yep. to offer a fantastic <clears throat> service, do what she wants, and we're going to stay in touch. Exactly. And she's going to follow and, up the next transaction. Which means you don't have to do a hundred deals a year and kill your kill yourself and break yeah. your back. Mm. We need to do like what? Six, if that? Yeah. Deals a year? But we're not transactional. Five. We're, we're relationships based. Exactly. So he's going to... Because of that. Either way, he's riding away. You can speak to instead of 200 people, you speak to, I'm saying like a group of 10 ultra high net worth people. Yeah. Deal with them. You're their point of contact. Yeah. And you're not breaking yourself. And you're just going to dinners. So your original question was, if there's a new person coming into the industry and they're not on social media, do they have a chance to to stand? What if there's someone in the industry already Mm. that has the, you know, the network, the black book? Yeah. Can they make it if they don't That's have okay. a social media? Uh, if they I, have zero social media presence? Look, I think a lot of it is relationship based, but I think ultimately um, for them to get bigger, I think they have to be on social media. Yeah, mm. have to. I don't want to go too much onto a social media tangent because we're meant to be talking about branding yeah. mm. and that's a completely different podcast. However, uh, this is a bit of a, I don't know the word, a bit of a thing internally between us three because uh, I have a logo, you two don't, but fair enough, I had an actual um, business before joining Daniel. Logo, do you think you need a logo? Does it help your brand? If it looks like yours, no. <laughs> if it looks like yours. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Benjamin. Um, I mean, I never thought of it in truth before I saw yours. Then I saw yours. Actually, I also you do s- have a logo. You both have a logo now. My face. Don't forget. What? No, you do. What? Three entrepreneur logo. Three entrepreneurs. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I saw I saw your logo. I saw Raza, um, who's a broker in in our brokerage, was also co- kind of branding her name on the DDRA post that no, she posted. No, that's not a logo. That's something that DDR or ADVSR offer you as a service if you pay them so, to run your social media. So, so when you say logo, why can't my name be my logo? It can be. I think it but is. But why? So, if your name wasn't Benji Weinberg, I'd say fine. But with your name. I don't know if you well, were, no, I mean, but so very, you for know. me, Raza, Raza's name was on her thing and that's her brand. Like, it's a nice name though. Raza Bogchunachuti. <laughs> I probably pronounced that wrong. <laughs> Look, that's I, so I'm, hard. I'm going I'm well, to throw it out Please there. Please ignore him. I'm going to throw it out there. I don't, think, I don't think having 
a logo is relevant whatsoever. Because ultimately, what we are talking about... <laughs> Can you get a refund for that 10 grand right. you yeah. paid your... No, but do you know what I mean? I think for what we are doing, we are bu- the brand we are building, I am personally building, is my name and probably and your my face. face. Yeah. yeah, That's my brand. Yeah, And so to me, to add a logo, I don't think would personally give me any any additional value, yeah. personally. Uh, for me, that's not a big thing. But I think yours looks cool. And Thank if you. I was going to do one, I think it's, a, yeah, I, I like yours. But for me, and it'd be interesting to see your, I mean, you've had it for a while and whatnot. Where do you see the value lies in your logo? Memorable. So <clears throat> if I, for instance, put up an agency board, which is something, and I don't want to make it again to a state agency, but as an mm. example, because it's my experience. But if I put up a two let board or a, or a let buy board or a sold buy board, it would have the logo on with a QR code. And people be like, I know that logo. Also, I made it circular on purpose because I learned at university that um, the most memorable memorable logos were circular, like Apple. Took something out of uni then. <laughs> <laughs> something, yeah, Jesus. That 50 grand was worth it. <laughs> yeah. It might be, could pay off with one deal. You're good, you're good mate, yeah. <laughs> it was much cheaper back then. Um, but yeah, so uh, I, I just, I, I don't I, forget, I had my own business, I had to have a logo. Yeah. You can't I, have a business think... without a logo. DGRE has a logo. Yeah. Mm. every business has a logo so, you, unless you're probably you a sweet well, shop so, but, so that's what you're saying every business has a logo yes whilst we are our own business we're self-employed we run our own business the reason I like that's your logo difference. we have differences in our mentality we do us three yeah and, and I think that's where I disagree with you slightly I think your logo is incredibly professional you know when I see your invoices when I see you post it on you know when you put it on tenancy agreements on tenancy agreements whatever it, I think it looks incredibly professional However, I don't think it adds much more value than it saying Alex Evagora, in my opinion. Yeah. For us as individuals, because yeah. whilst we are, you know, I'm not trying to build my, the name of my company. I'm not trying to build my company so I can sell my company. I am my company. Benji Weinberger, my face, like you were saying. But So whether I have a logo or not, I think isn't going to add or take away. Mm. I think it's a nice to have. Yeah. This is just my view. You might disagree with it. I think, it, as I said, it looks incredibly professional and it's cool. I, I think it's cool. Yeah, you know, your logo is cool. And when yeah, I see it, I'm you. like, yeah, that looks quite sick. Maybe yeah. I'd have my own one, but you I don't think it's going to... your own one. Yeah, yeah, maybe, but I don't think you it's going to... I don't think it's going to... I don't think my logo is going to You're thinking about viral. the ROI, which is good. Yeah, I think you my... You should, before you spend any money. But also for me, like... It's, it's, <clears> it's not <throat> expensive, is it, to create a logo? No, but also for, for No, me, it's inexpensive. For me, the DDR... You know, we. I am a broker at DDRE. Yeah. Daniel Dagger's Real Estate. And I, part of my brand is DDRE because that's who we work with and, and we, we work, to, you know, that. So I want that to come through to people as well. Mm-hmm. So if I had like a DDRE brand, you know, behind me, but then also my own brand, I just think it might, uh, you know. D- d- contradict. Contradict to me because mm. people might get a bit confused potentially. It might yeah. water down the... DDRE, but this or that or why? So for me, I'm proud. I'm not, not yeah, proud. It's such interesting. A good, I'm not saying yeah, no, I'm not, I shouldn't do it, but I'm proud of like, I am DDRE. Yeah, I was just thinking that, you know, we want to leverage off the brand that we have. Yeah. And I was just, whilst you were talking, I was thinking, you know, how they do it in the States where they have different, they have teams. Yeah. And that's what goes on the marketing and then kind of yeah. in a small print, it says powered by yeah. Douglas Elliman or whatever yeah. it is. Whereas for us, and I agree with you. Yeah. I'm Benji Weinberger from DDRE Global. Global. Like we yeah. have built, like, Daniel has built <laughs> a, pri- yeah, a yeah. prime and super prime agency. No other agent can say, well, they can, but not, you know, what we've built yeah. in such a short period of time, mm. I want to leverage off that yeah. rather I, than I say agree. Benji Weinberger and then my little logo. Yeah. Does it make you more valuable having a brand? And if so, who to? Yeah. I think it, it, of course, it makes you more valuable because your your brand is you. Your brand will ultimately lead you to have more business, um, more money, more income, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, yeah, I, I I think it adds mass value. So, I'm going to say something slightly controversial. I know you keep on taking away from it, and the more we're saying brand, and the more we're thinking about followers, I think a brand, as we so see, like an Apple, for example, is in my eyes, irre- not irrelevant, but I would go as far as saying I much value having a following than building a brand. I want to spend time on building my following because, yeah. you know, you look at um, KSI, you look at 
who did he was it logan paul or whatever the yeah. guy who he did the the prime, prime drink. drinks yeah they have zero clue about drinks no clue whatsoever mm. but they have an incredibly large following a million followers plus whatever it is yeah so when they want to go down a certain avenue and they do a post yeah i don't even does ksi have a logo i don't know maybe they have a brand sure. that maybe they do yeah well i guess ksi because that's probably not his that's name the brand, yeah um when they do a post, it goes to a million people. So whatever they post on their social handles, they could sell. Yeah. They could prob- we could probably I do a joint venture with them. Love that. You- your Queensgate listing. You could probably say, KSI, you know, you could be the front of it. Um, you can say you're a realtor and I'll, you have the 80% of the commission, whatever it is. He could probably sell that. Yeah. Just because of the exposure that he gives that asset. Good point. So when you're saying <clears throat> how important is it to have a brand that can you can leverage off to get you more business... I don't think the brand is of that much importance in terms of answering you know, answering questions. I think it's the personal and and the the following that you have. Yeah, I love because that. Because if you have more people that you can are expose they something, they are interlinked. But I think I'd rather say I want to build my following. Yeah, I feel than like that build is a brand. brand. I feel I think yeah. you're talking about the same thing. I think it, we are. It, 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 it does it, kind of marry together. But I wouldn't it, want to call it a brand. But no. it, but because you are your brand. My following my brand. But KSI, I think, is hang on a brand. minute. It's like saying I don't want to be successful, but I want to have a lot of money. I think the money is is the measurement it's of the byproduct, success. The byproduct. Followers are a measurement of brand. Yeah. But but can let me put it out how here. big is your brand? Well, I have a million followers. But let's that's put it out. a massive let's say, brand. Let's go back to the KSI because I agree, Benji. I agree totally with you. But KSI, Logan Paul, all that lot now can go and sell out boxing well, arenas. Yeah, yeah. They can go and sell can, thingy yeah. bob drinks. They, they could, could go sell and do anything. They go and sell yachts. Makeup. If he started his Kim own Kardashian. brokerage tomorrow, it'd probably be the biggest brokerage of yachts in the country in the country yeah. in the world. Probably would be. And that's because of what you said. It's his following. So we want to get to a point in our careers as well. And I personally want to do that. Yeah, when I've got a big enough following, if I'm going to sell a yacht and help sun and, and sell a yacht for Sunseeker or something like that, mm. my followers will be able to buy a yacht and I can broker a deal. I, I think if you're clever enough, you put two and two together by now, but we've basically said that you become more valuable to your client. Massively. If you have a brand mm. and a following. Mm. Yeah, like that. Definitely. Because you're going to help them sell, you yeah. know, and and, and you know go, i think just really quickly because i know you want to ask a couple of questions yeah i think it does go back to the the dark comment that you made about the eulogy yeah and it puts the emphasis on us as individuals because if we're posting good content and people buy into us we're going to get followers if you know if we just post about real estate real estate real estate real estate real estate we are pi- we're pigeonholing ourselves and closes off other avenues whereas if you just post about yourself you like kickboxing do it linus it's fine Hey, <laughs> love that. The They've been wanting the to open, open their beers. Anyway, for a while. I think I was I think I was rambling on, but my point no, you is, went, you want to build your, put yourself out there rather yeah. than talk about industry specific. Yeah, because then you can go down any avenue you want. Yeah. You know, Daniel, for example, in five years' time, I don't think he's going to be selling real estate. Yeah, I think he could be selling anything. Yeah, he could. Yeah, hundred percent. And the of same course. could be. Of course, he could be he could be selling his time to yeah. talk yeah. to people. Definitely. I mean, I think every single course member from the DD Academy is a follower of his. Hundred yeah. percent. We were talking the other day. You were passionate about uh, dog training. In ten years' time, mm. you could have the biggest dog training uh, business in, or dog in London. Shampoo in London. Yeah. Or dog, Why yeah. not? Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, another question. I think it's a no-brainer. Does it help you get more clients if you have a brand? <laughs> done i mean yeah. come on yeah yeah i think we've answered that already 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um someone's new to the industry right mm. are we on are we on questions now yeah no no, no not yet oh no okay. not yet uh someone's new to the industry yeah um okay uh, this basically let's, let's go to the q a this is a question from me to you guys yeah someone's new to the industry uh brand spanking new maybe not less not more than a year in yeah or hasn't started yet that sort of experience yeah should they start building their brand now or wait until later no now, now. I feel like we've answered that as well. Dumb. Yeah. Because even if they don't feel confident enough in adding loads and loads of value, they will learn as they go. Mm. Another question. They will learn as they go. Okay, let me rephrase. What if they think it's going to ruffle feathers internally so, or if it's going to make their colleagues go, ha, who do you think you are posting on social media I've now? I've got a really good answer for this, but if you want to go first. Ben, or go or their it. manager gives them a stick being like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, go on, you go. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Three I, entrepreneurs. Do you, know I, do you know what I would turn around and go? Fuck you. Here's my notice. Yeah. Hang on. He's got a mortgage to pay. He's got. Well, he's got his probably doesn't if he's got that much experience. I think ultimately, if you're investing, or she. if you're investing, you keep in saying he. I don't know. Why I keep thinking of it as a man. If you're in, if she. you're investing, 
into your future career mm. and you understand this and you you believe in it and you know where we're going if you're going to be successful you have to start tomorrow so i and if the people sorry, above Dan's you are putting you down up. honestly if the people above you are putting you down yeah. and say no don't post yeah. it's because they're fucking scared of you listen they're scared that I, you'll get too big so there's i agree that's my what that's what scared. my that's what my Maybe heart would say yeah f you here's yeah. my notice my head would say to you know a young person that's listening and there will be people young people that are listening that can't afford to just say here's my notice <laughs> mm. you know but i would love to do that and to give them the advice to do that when i first started in the industry I, just, I was living with my sorry listen i i parents. would say to that person especially listen. if they're working in a corporate company speak to your boss and say to them listen you know i can see there's massive benefit of you know building a social brand whilst i'm at this business you know i'm happy to tag x company happy to you know reference the business so it's not all about me and it's obviously only going to be our direct listings x y and z would you be okay and i know we say the big corporates don't let you do it they, there are companies that do so if you're a young person starting the business i would you know run it past your manager and ask for permission the what about if they say no I don't think they should. I, well, I, I, no, be, I we don't we don't want I, you. You know, I, I, I be, disagree on this. I'd be, it's good to disagree. I'd be very surprised if they said no. I think some of the companies would be like, no, we don't. Not, you've got to sit within our brand guidelines. It's all in the brand guidelines. It's got to be X, Y, and Z. Yeah, out by yeah X, they will do that Z. to yeah, protect they, themselves. They, they do do yeah, that. No, but honestly, I still think ultimately you're still going to be hindered. If you, if you can't 100% throw yourself into this deep end, yeah, and I hopefully agree. some young people are like, you know. Uh, not not neck. financially but that's life hit, right yeah, but that's life it. you not can't really though if you're 20 hang on you're a 20 you can no, say no fuck you no you're a 21 because you're young you're a 21 you year old you can leave they're not gonna have a mortgage and a kid you can't yet. leave you're a 21 year old you've never done a deal before you're learning the ropes at this big corporate company what they're going to come to no. ddre global well, they haven't got you, a black book if you're never 21 years old if you're 21 years old and have you know very little expenses and you get told what to do by your manager saying don't post on social media call me and what are you going to tell I them? Give what, you permission. And what are you going to tell them to do? <laughs> to tell them to fuck off, giving them Mate, notice. And to I agree. somewhere Pick, where you can. I agree. I do. It would be where, a very boring podcast if we if we agreed on everything. So this is good. Where can they go? You'll find somewhere TGRE. else. So they'll find somewhere find else, somewhere else that will give them permission that'll, that'll to allow. do it. Yeah. So fine. So let's yeah. say there's the, uh, most companies will give you permission to do it. Uh, maybe I think the, within the guidelines, I think it might go back a step. I can think of some companies that do. There's a certain. I think there's two or three companies that don't actually let your there will be. the agents some, yeah. post. But if you're in a company where two people, let's scroll it back a little bit. If you're going into an interview with a potential agency to start your career, when they ask you at the mm. end, do you have any questions it's for nice. us as a company? You say to them, "I want to grow my digital following," and you want to get I'm it in really, writing that I'm they say yes. I'm really in it, and I want to do this, and I don't want to have restrictions, and I'll be, you know, I'll stick within not being too thingy bob for your guidelines, but I want to grow it. That's part of me. And make sure that they are like we're on board with it. Well, so yeah, we circled back to social media. Yeah. I don't know how we keep doing this. We need to have a social brand. media because it's the biggest it's the thing. Brand. It's like 75, 80, 90 percent. We should do a podcast on social media. media. Take, away, take away social media. Actually, you can have a brand without social media. Yeah, but it's hard to build. Very, hard, very to build. hard to build unless you're going to go and spend millions yeah. and millions it is, and millions it would be hard. when you can do it on social. It's just such a good tool. It's free. You can advertise to the world. I can DM specific. someone in Nigeria about a property for sale in Nigeria, or, or, or you like anywhere. Yeah, but I had Madagascar. The other day. I had I had a uh, a guy that I met on on TikTok. Someone in he, Australia DM me. He spoke Arabic. Okay, so I said, "Can you come down to my listing on the waterfront and do a tour and post it to all your followers in Arabic?" So now, and he did it. Met yeah. him down there. Did the That's thing. Did on TikTok, uh, which was great. And suddenly now, for me. And my client, I know we're going back to what we probably talked about in previous episodes, but yeah. now I've got all his followers seeing my client's property in Arabic, which he's speaking to, which is great because I don't know how to speak Arabic. Hmm. And now it's great. All fine social media, free. Absolutely free. What it cost me, like an hour of my time. Yeah. And now I get to like another 50,000 followers that he's got. And if you, it's if you, didn't, have, if you didn't have social great, media, man. you couldn't do that. Couldn't do that. And if you worked out how much you get per hour, something like 20 quid. Hmm? What does it mean? Well, if you said you spent an hour of yeah. your time, it's like, and your hourly rates probably like if you work out your salary is like twenty quid an hour that you earn. <laughs> I think I was at five grand was mine the first podcast. <laughs> I remember that. I've gone down in some. Well, no, it was four. Four grand. Was okay, Q and A. I thought so, we were in the Q and A already. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is from external people, okay. not from me. So, uh, what is this? Yeah. Is shall I say who it's from? Yeah, this is from Tom Glenn and Louis Vasili at Chesterton's. Oh, this is a joint question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is a joint question. Oh, friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, they are my mates. Chesterton's. Good firm, though. 
Yeah. Funniest or weirdest thing that's ever happened to you on a viewing? Oh, wow. We've really gone off. Uh, <laughs> we've really gone off topic. Um, oh, God. Yeah. I've thought of something, but I, but I don't know if I've, I've got, I've got, re- I've got a funny one. Really quick one. I can't I'll, say mine. It was too bad. I'll try and make you it really, really quick. So, uh, chap who I used to work with, Josh Marks, who actually left the business we were at, set up his new business, smashing it, doing so well. Oh, and man. we, we went to him. We went. To, <laughs> he's married with a kid, um, <laughs> and I'm I'm engaged. Um, he we went together on a valuation, small apartment in Maidavel, I think it was, and there was a baby. Like it was. There's a round thing where the baby sits and its legs dangle and it can like bounce up the and bouncer. down. I know, yeah, bouncer. The bouncer. Yeah. And we yeah. were in that room talking with the mum. Isn't that and that then, thing outside the club? Like, and she, and and the, and she had agreed on the spot to appoint us. She was very impressed with us, so she went next door to get her passport. Um, and bank statement to give us, you know, the anti money laundering documents. Don't and tell me you kicked the baby. So whilst she went into the other room, the baby started hysterically crying, <laughs> and Josh didn't know what to do, so he, he quick, kicked he, it. No, no, he didn't <laughs> kick the baby. What's wrong with Why you? Does this keep coming. From so he, he he went over to the baby and like went to like half pick it up. He kind of half got it out the bouncer. He dropped the baby. No, no. Whilst the baby's hysterically crying. And then the mum walks back in. Oh and like God. all she sees is just Josh holding the he baby that the ba- out of nowhere is hysterically crying. And then he like just looks at her and just like, just like puts his arm out. <laughs> just like give it back. <laughs> so she's just like come back in the room thinking what the hell's happened. That's great. She luckily still gave us the instruction, but I, I, I was in hysterics. That's great. Like, it was one of the funniest things. It great. kind of had to be there, yeah, but yeah, yeah. No, it's good, it was though. very, That's very funny. funny. What was the baby's name? Pedro. I don't Pedro. know. Why? What was the baby's kick... name from Hangover? Alan like names the baby. Did he kick Carlos? Did he kick Carlos? Did he kick Carlos? Carlos. Did he kick Carlos? He's or... named Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> What's your? Was good. I feel like you. you've I can't got... say mine. It's too bad. Okay, so find the second funniest one. Well, I'll say it. I'll say it. But um, then you know we might have. To... You can cut it if you want to cut it. We're not cutting anything. Go okay, on. we're basically... raw here. It's raw. raw. Okay, so basically, yeah. <laughs> Raw. This is the. Uh, I've got one more. Got okay. Um. So. Um. Went to a viewing. Property was just off of Oxford Street, very central London. Um. You know, very next to like the party town. Uh. And I, w- I knocked on the door as you do. I was trained to knock on the door first, open it a little bit, and say hello. Yeah. Just to make sure no one's there. Yeah. Did that. Nothing. Walk into one of the bedrooms. There's three um same sex people in the same bed um and i woke them up and they were very delirious and just about knew where they were you can tell there was a party last night it, there was a musk a certain musk <laughs> in the air uh it smells of like happiness what time does this podcast go out <laughs> past 8 p.m <laughs> <laughs> and um there was a a needle on the floor with oh a syringe. My God. Jeez, God, um, and there was, the worst thing was there was a, a dildo, a big one <laughs> on the wall. So I cancel, cancel my viewing, <laughs> cancel my viewing. And uh... Don't forget, I'm showing someone around. I'm still showing. And the people were like, don't worry, come in. No problem. Come in. That's fine. And they're like pouring themselves a coffee or a water. No problem. Show you, show, show you. Yeah, it's fine. No problem. We just had a little party last night, a bit of heavy head. Um, Oh, this dildo was stuck to the wall, those suckers. Do you know that bow and arrow yes. as a kid and like trying to stick it on your forehead? It was like that on the wall, um, <laughs> sticking out. And I like, was like, mm, that's the bathroom over there. <laughs> you know, shimmying past it. Shimmying um, past it. <laughs> yeah. Shimmying, just like dancing around it. He didn't take it in the end. Oh, he didn't dear. take it. That's pretty good. And I think we discovered more didn't people in the what? flat as well. <laughs> so... Wow. That happened. Have you, got, have you got any funny ones? Uh, I don't think I, I mean that. I'm not quite sure what can top that. I can top. I can. Yeah. I think I can top I'm still it. Doing go on, if you've got, you go, it's you a very, go. I'll try and make it quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was at my old company, and <laughs> there was a 40 million pound house. Yeah. <clears throat> cameras everywhere. Yeah. And my boss at the time had a uh, intern. Yeah. And he said to the intern, "The viewing's at four o'clock. Can you yeah. go at three thirty? Just get all the lights on. Get everything prepared." So the intern went. Yeah. Housekeeper let him in. And he's getting around, getting all the lights on, goes to the master bedroom and there's a thong on the floor. And... Don't know why I pulled that face. And he's turning all the lights on and then the doorbell goes and he's like, shit, the thong's there. So he like grabs the thong, puts it in his pocket and like then goes to open the door. His boss is there with the buyers no. and, and he lets them in. <gasps> anyway, um, the viewing happens. I don't think they bought it. Left. And uh, the intern turned all the lights off, did everything, got forgot everything ready, thong. went back to the went back to the office, forgot the thong. Oh so no. my, my God. The boss <laughs> gets a call from the client. <gasps> Um, James, 
Your oh, intern no. has uh, taken my wife's thong, and I've caught it on camera. That is. Can fantastic. I please have? Can I please have an explanation? <gasps> so love that. My boss has to go and get the intern, and I think he made a joke out of it. I think he yeah. took him in the back and was like, "Bless him." You know, this is a serious disciplinary, um, and he's obviously like red in the face. Of course. Obviously, it's just genuine mistake. Yeah. And then I think he made him go back and give the thong That's back to the great. wife. That is fantastic. Honestly, is that rule number one? Never see the yeah, phone yeah. with his cameras. I feel like you two, <laughs> you two have got great ones. I don't think I have anything like that. I think the only the only one I can think we'll make some of memories. off my cut on the, off the top of the cuff was I remember that when I have only invited this house and they had two like Siamese cats, like really fucking Hungry. precious to the it's owner. Just, it's polite. I'm so, driving. Like Thanks. really precious to the owner. These two Siamese cats, and she was like, "Whenever you whenever you do oh, viewings, just make sure the cats just make sure the cats don't leave." And I remember doing these viewings <laughs> and <laughs> and all I remember is that I opened up a window so or I, I think I, listen, I think I opened Sorry. up a door. So these two Persian cats opened and she was like, so precious over these cats. Whatever you do, don't lose the fucking cats. Oh no, you lost the fucking cats. And you lost both cats. You I kicked one too. No, no, no. I opened up the door <laughs> one. I, opened, I didn't kick a cat out. <laughs> you dropped it. Sorry, could someone call the RSPCA? Like, come on, mate. Um, <laughs> I and I just remember opening up a door. I think they were leaving or something like that. Cat ran out. And all I remember is spending oh. the whole afternoon <laughs> trying to find this fucking cat looking underneath cars Shit. all the other stuff that and i just really did you find hours. it i did find the over. Um, oh. it didn't get run over around oh, sorry you just <laughs> stop trying to guess the end of your stories some funnier ones but there's some good nuggets nice. there. some good right. nuggets. I, hope, I hope people like that yeah just bringing it back to actual mm. seriousness for a second yeah question from daniel daggers who's that, that? daniel is daniel daggers? daggers yeah Daniel, never heard of him. Hopefully, he's listening the to most build a brand of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he does actually watch our podcast, doesn't he? he does. Yeah. What's the most valuable thing? We can't le- post them without his sign off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's probably what it is. Is it? No. Carry uh, on. <laughs> what's the most valuable thing you've learned in the last year? Oh, wow, what from joining DDRE? I, I, to be honest with you, I actually think it's probably around everything we've just spoken about, and I think everything I've said in this podcast. I've kind of known, but probably since joining DDRE is I've taught you quite a lot. Seeing all you guys and following Daniel sure. and the, the 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 you know the the nuggets of gold that are given via the base camp and everything like that. Then yeah, everything I've just spoken about. I just I, I the only reason I'm getting my phone out is because you're gonna call him. No no no, I did a post. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I did a post on on LinkedIn so literally rude. this afternoon. Taking a call in mid podcast, and I actually highlighted a, a few things. And I'll, I'll just name two of yep. the, the things that I've learned the most. If you want to be at the top of your game, you have to sacrifice. Be like Alex. Don't be like Alex. You have to <laughs> sacrifice more than you can imagine. hundred percent. That's one thing I've learned since I've been here. Love that. And the second thing, which I'm actually really starting to enjoy is going through difficult periods is a good thing. It means good things are happening. And that is when you should persevere rather than back down. That is interesting. Yeah. Nice one. That was thank it. you, that Benji. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I think, I think that brings us to the end of the show. Uh, thank you for listening to episode five of thank the you. Three Entrepreneur Podcast. Uh, remember, if you got something from it, pay the fee. Please like and share it. And we will see you on episode six. Yeah, where can you oh. find us? Our handles. Our handles. For, um, our, for our brand. <clears throat> yeah. our social you can body. find us at Benji underscore Weinberger. Benji dot Weinberger. <laughs> Alex <laughs> underscore Evergora. E. <laughs> and Oliver Dot Ingles, yeah. Yes. Why don't you guys just go underscore so we're like consistent? No, but I have to change it all about no, now. It doesn't it's look fine. as pretty. It's good, yeah. Dot's that good. underscores are way prettier yeah. than full stops. But then follow us on those on those handles to show uh, how we're building we brand. Our brand. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. We're being cool. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank we'll you for see listening. you on episode five. Six. 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 See you. Take care. To Goodbye. the j- to the jingle. <laughs> <laughs>